Hi and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this video we're going to look at a fairly uh, involved concept. We're going to look at a needs analysis for critical illness insurance. Now this is the fifth video in our series covering needs analysis in general. And you may recall, if you watched the four videos covering the life insurance needs analysis, that the sort of antiquated approach to a needs analysis has been to do an income-based approach Now, we said also there's the possibility of doing an expenses-based approach. And you may recall we said that income-based is generally going to give us something of an inaccurate number. And now this is actually a fairly common way nonetheless to sell critical illness insurance. I see this done an awful lot where you say something like, Oh, the typical person gets a one times annual salary or one times annual income or maybe two times annual income or two times salary. And there is some justification for this. I understand this where we say, well, if you get sick and we can replace a year of income, hey, at least you know there's some insulation there. But really, that's not much of a basis for needs analysis. We're sort of assuming a lot about the possible nature of an illness here. Expenses based is a little bit more difficult. We're going to come back to that in a second. The other approach that I see, and in fact what I see quite a bit, is a, I'll call it a budget based approach. And the approach here is basically what can you afford? And I do see this quite a bit with critical illness insurance and there is a little bit of a risk with this. So the issue here is really does this put the right amount of insurance in place? Is this anything like the right amount of insurance? And I would suggest it's hard to support that this actually is going to put the right amount of insurance in place. It might put something in place. It might be too much which means you don't have dollars available anywhere else, or it might not be enough, and if something actually goes wrong, we might be in a tough spot then. And actually, we did have, in 2010, the Insurance Council of British Columbia in a ruling where an agent by the name of Schmid put some insurance in place on exactly this basis, the basis of what can you afford, the Insurance Council of British Columbia said, no, that's not an acceptable way to do a needs analysis, and they levied a fine here, a $2,000 fine, plus some education requirements. So we don't want to rely on a basis that regulators have identified as being uh, sloppy here, and we don't want to rely on a method that is not necessarily going to put the right amount of insurance in place. So what do we do then? Well. If we can go to an expenses based approach, this is, as we said earlier, this is the most accurate approach. But the problem here is that the expenses associated with getting sick are somewhat indeterminate. We've got a whole lot of unknowns here. Unlike premature death where there's at least some predictability associated with the set of expenses here. Here we don't know how long you're going to be sick for. We don't know what the nature of the illness is. Of course if we could predict all of these things we either wouldn't need insurance or we could buy exactly the right amount of insurance. We don't know if it's going to affect you only or is it going to affect others that is are there other people who might have to take some time off work or do your kids have to take some time off school or do you have to have babysitters do you have to have travel can you get care locally there's a whole bunch of unknowns around this and these unknowns really do present a fairly significant challenge so probably the best data we have available on this 
comes from a study done in 2010, and people who attend my classes regularly have almost invariably seen me talk about this. This 2010 study done by the Canadian Cancer Action Network in conjunction with the Manitoba chapter of the Canadian Cancer Society talked about the financial hardship of cancer. It's quite a good study actually and you'll see it uh, referenced quite often in my social media feeds and so forth. It's quite good. Gives us lots and lots of data. So here we can start to make some determinations. Now this is not bulletproof. We have to pay attention to this. It's only cancer that we're talking about which covers a lot of CI claims but certainly not all of them. Still pretty useful. So here's what we see that the average wage loss for a cancer survivor for the survivor is just over 17 or just under $18,000, $17,729 for the survivor. So that can give us a starting point anyways, a discussion we can have with our client what does this look like? Now, we can't only think about the survivor because what we also see here is that about a quarter of the time, so about a quarter of workable hours are lost for caregivers as well. So your spouse or whoever ends up taking care of you, your caregiver is going to lose about 23% of their workable hours. So that person's ability to earn an income is also affected by this. Now of course we have this very generous public health care system in Canada but it doesn't cover everything so where you have something more serious go wrong here we find that 25 percent of end-of-life costs are dealt with by the family so even though we have this uh, great health care system that provides lots of free health care for us, not everything is free here. What we did find as well, and we often do refer to CI as a sort of asset protection vehicle, that 41% of family caregivers dipped into savings. So very common to have this additional financial burden here that we have to deal with. So we have lots and lots of different costs here. You may have drug costs, you may not. Lots of provinces cover cancer drugs, but not every province does. In provinces where drug costs are not covered, that costs as much as potentially another $65,000 on average. Now, if you happen to live in a major center and a family member gets sick, I don't want to say it's lucky, but it's easier than if you live remotely for people who have to travel in addition to this set of costs that we already covered, you have a further average of $25,000. So you can add another $25,000 to those costs. So this is starting to get a little bit expensive and we're starting to be able to define this. So something that we can look at here is say if you've got a family who lives remote, lives somewhere outside of a major center, we've got an average wage loss here. We've got the responsibility for the caregivers and the cost of that. We might want to tax something additional on there because of the need to travel. Now I'll grant that this doesn't give us a perfect expenses based approach but what it certainly does do it helps us to better define that set of expenses. So at least now we can sit down with the client we can say hey client instead of just shooting in the dark here and saying oh, you know one time salary two times salary which may still end up being part of the discussion because we see down here that we do have to take into account your wage loss and if the average income earner makes around fifty thousand dollars we can see about a third of that disappears we can see that your spouse or other caregiver is going to have some financial burden here we can start to work these numbers in and we can take into account more than just this sort of guessing game around one time salary two times salary or probably even worse is what can you afford? This is certainly not the ideal approach either. 
So I hope this is helpful. I hope you, this gives you some tools at least to think about what a critical illness insurance needs analysis can look like and how much more we can have a valuable discussion with our client that goes beyond just ah, what can you afford or this one or two times salary. When we start to bring this kind of information to people, at least in my opinion, it gives them more satisfaction that we've actually thought about what we're doing here. We're actually investigating to some extent what this life insurance, or sorry, what this critical illness insurance needs analysis looks like. Thank you very kindly, and I hope you enjoy your continued studies.